Welcome to Footy Talk with Jay Clark and Lee Montagna. He's the best analyst in the business. It is going to be a juicy hit of an AFL season preview. We're going to get through all the clubs over the next few days. The big news stories, the uh, the analysis on where they're going to finish and what we think will be the big storylines for those clubs. Joe, we have to start with Melbourne. They've been probably the biggest talking point over the summer, let's be honest. Cultural issues, a coach under pressure. Clayton Oliver has been training, hasn't been. What's your radar telling you about Melbourne at the moment? Well, I think the saviour for Melbourne Footy Club, Jay-Z, is the game start. And that is where Melbourne are at their best. (laughs) To be honest, I am one that still is very, very much half glass full on Melbourne. Are you buying the D stock? 100%. And... And the people, oh. and I'm not sure why people would be jumping off Melbourne because yep. they still tick every box for me. They are still an elite defensive team, an elite contest team. They've still got players in the right age bracket. I think there's only four guys that are over the age of 30. They've got some youngsters that are still developing. And let's not forget, mm. they lost to Collingwood mm. having 30 more inside <laughs> 50s. They were very stiff to lose the game. Collingwood defended yes. amazingly. And against Carlton, they had 28 shots from yes. their 53 entries. They yep. missed a lot of goals. Bailey Fritch had an off night by foot. And now everyone wants to jump off. I'm not jumping off Melbourne. I okay. think they'll be there again when the whips are cracking. This is a big time capsule moment. I like this, uh, Joey. Did have the, they had to have the kumbaya moment. You know, or you get all the players into a circle. You get the coach there. And do they need to sort of bring any issues to the fore? We've got Joel Smith out for you now accused of uh, drug trafficking. Drug trafficking. Um, Clayton Oliver's got obviously a lot of personal issues. Do they need to get... On the same page, the D's. Are you worried about this sort of off-field stuff? Uh, what, what happens when you've got these sorts of situations and, and alarm bells going yeah, off inside your footy team? I think there's two ways it goes. You either let the distractions affect you as a club and there's fractures internally and people start pointing fingers and question each other. Yep. Or it, you, you bunker in and you, you bunker down together. And mm-hmm. as, a, as a playing group, you let all the other situations and noises and, and things take care of themselves and you just worry about what you can worry about. And yep. that is training hard, preparing and playing good footy. And I trust that would, what is what Melbourne will do. Oh, yep. I think Simon Goodwin's a terrific coach. I think they've got yep. the best leadership group in the competition. When you think about Gorn and Viney and Jake Lever yep. and Petrarca and Brayshaw, those leaders are yep. strong. Yep. So I think that once the footy starts, they will let their training and their games do the talking. Mm. Whatever happens with Joel Smith or, you know, the Clayton Oliver distractions, if it still lingers throughout the year, that will be dealt with by whoever. But I think the playing group are still really strong. As I said to you, I think... Um, they, they will be right there when the whips are cracking again. I'm not jumping off. You mentioned Brayshaw. Been talking a lot about Nathan Murphy's head knocks and yep. him taking some time at the moment. Wouldn't be surprised if Angus Brayshaw is making a big uh, decision on his career at the moment. They need Oliver uh, in that midfield brigade. If potentially something happens with Brayshaw, I think it's a bit of a watch this space. Lastly, Joey, the forward conversion. That's been the big uh, story, hasn't it? They've got Jacob Van Ruyen. Did they need another big banana down there? Harrison Petty's uh, injury question mark. Tom Fulton. Uh, injury question mark. It didn't work with Brody Grundy. Do you think the forward line can capitalise on the obvious supply they're going to get? And that is the only concern. We understand that. And it's as much about the ball movement and the entries as it is the forward combination. You yep. don't have to have, you know, three superstars in your forward line to kick a winning score. In fact, a little misconception. Melbourne finished six for points four last year. They kicked, They averaged 90 points a game. So they're doing a lot right. They averaged 90 points a game. Collingwood averaged 93 points a game. Yeah. So this talk that <laughs> Melbourne can't score is a bit of a myth. Yes, they can convert much better. We understand that. I think a big piece of that will be Andrew McWalter coming across from Richmond. Mm. The ball movement. Secret weapon. Secret weapon in just adjusting their ball movement slightly. Yep. I think Harrison Petty will be a terrific forward when he gets back. Hopefully he doesn't miss too much footy. I think he's showed that he can be a good contested mark, convert alongside Van Royen. I like Fritch and McAdam as a point of difference. And they've got some terrific smalls with mm-hmm. Pickett and Spargo and Neil Bullen and, and Chandler. And whatever that mix looks like, Jack Billings is floating around. There's some other youngsters. Look, as I said, I, I'm not jumping off Melbourne. I think they are still a contender to win a premiership. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is a bit of a redeemed team. I think they'll have a chip Ooh, on their shoulder I about what's happened the last couple of years. Everything that's gone on in the off-season, led by Max Gorn and a leadership group, watch out. I think Melbourne will have a real chip on their shoulder. Cap space would be tight for the Ds. Adelaide make a big play for Harrison Petty, you would think. Will they lose a big banana? It wouldn't shock me. The redeemed team, that's the sort of stuff you get from Lee Montagna. He is on fire early in 2024. Let's go to North Melbourne. Might be right down the other end of the ladder. You know, I still... 
You tell me if I'm right here, Joe, but I still cough up my Wheaties in the morning when I think about them beating Gold Coast late last year at Gloucester. It cost them Harley Reid. I love the kids in terms of McKercher and Dersma's going to be a star. What I'm seeing from Harley Reid, I just think it's going to make a lot of North Melbourne people not, not, um, really nervous throughout the year. Be Ad Wardlaw, you see Simpkin, LDU zipping and zagging like he's Chris Judd. There's some elite midfield talent. But it's at either end that I'm I'm really nervous for North Melbourne on the field this year. How are you reading the tea leaves at Arden Street? Yeah, I think everyone probably agrees. I mean, they've got a heap of young midfielders now, a heap of run, um, and and a lot of young talent. But the talls are going to be an issue. Both ends of the, the ground, Coleman Jones. Yep. Um, you know, is he going to stand up as a forward? Tristan Sherry is the number one ruck. He's had some injury concerns over summer too. Charlie Coleman going to play down back. So so they're still a work in progress. They're, yep. they're still. Um, really down the bottom of their rebuild, and have got have got a way to go. But there's a lot of positives. I want to see them. I want to see them start to convert through the midfield. So we saw Hawthorne, and we'll touch on them at another point about their young mids starting to really do, do, dominate around contest yep. and stoppage. Now, North Melbourne, if it's not going to be defensively at the moment, if they still have a bit of work to do in attack, I want to see these young midfielders, but still led by the likes of Aldiu and Simpkin, who have been around a while, see if they can really start to dominate some teams with their talent through the midfield. I think George Wardlaw. His second year spike will be enormous. He's my rising star favourite. If you look back to Clayton Oliver's second year, Paddy Cripps' second year, kaboom. players like that, they mm. do a big spike. They mm. go kaboom. <laughs> and I reckon Georgie Wardlaw will go kaboom in his second year yep. and almost be the number one man in that midfield by the end of the year. Exactly. LDU, I know he's an absolute star. Is he a bit of Zach Butters? He's the, Zach Butters is the one I think. He's a hard head, explosive oh. inside, just he's, bang. Yeah, a bit more crash and bash, Wardlaw. Okay. Zach, well, Zachy Butters does crash and bash, but yeah. it's a pr- maybe different build. you got to put your helmet on with this kid. You do, you do. He's, <laughs> he's going he's to he's hurt some blokes. He's going to win contests. Yep. Um, we know they're a slow burn. Their profile from last year said they're really poor in all three phases. So they've got to identify one area of their game to start to grow. I'd like that to be around the midfield because that's where their strength lies. They've brought in some runners as well, Dylan Stevens, Zach Fisher, um, to go along with with those other youngsters you've mentioned. So looking forward to watching them play, but still a slow burn. Can they play Stevens and Zach Fisher? I sometimes I go, I go, I always go high draft pick. He has got elite talent, and then you say, well, I've been watching him for two years and actually haven't seen him. Yeah, seen put it together in a game yet. So where where have you got the what buckets have you got those? Well, two I think you're, you're bringing them to your club to play them. You're not bringing them to the yeah. club to play for the reserve. So where yeah, they outside. play outside wing, half back, Run. half forward. And I want to see them use their running handball game. That, that's been all the talk over preseason. Um, we're watching these preseason games. They've got to use their runners mm. as their strength because they can't play a kicking game with their, the lack mm. of tools. Yep. So I think it'll be an exciting brand of footy yep. and we'll see what Clarko can do, but still going to be a few years away. So for me, we still think they're going to be a bottom four team. Stoppages, I think, are going to be crucial. As you mentioned, that's going to be a key part of their game plan. There's no doubt about that. Clarko's going to have to sprinkle more of his magic dust. A big story from a contract front. You know he's going to be Cam Zerha. He got into Jason Horn Francis. Where's your signature, son? What are you doing? Where's the commitment? Now he's holding out. Does he stay? for the rebuild as he move on to more of a contender I think that will be a huge story to watch on the contract front we move along to Carlton speaking of big stories they will have a huge spotlight on them and I must admit Joey I, my, they were my early pick for the flag Carlton I love what they're building but then Weedering pops a calf again had some trouble there. Now, Sammy Walsh may be out for five or six weeks with a little back concern that's a little whisper going around about Walsh how bad that back is are you nervous about a couple of these these injuries early? Or uh, you'd rather have the injuries in pre-season get than them in the out middle of, of the season. Because injuries are going to happen. Now, they are going to be a part of footy. Every club's going to have them. Look, if Weathering misses the first three weeks of the season and plays the next 20, we're not going to have an issue. Yep. Hopefully, they're getting it on top of it early with Sam Walsh and go, you know what, let's jump on it now rather than wait for it to be in the middle of the season. So, look, I'm not too concerned. Um, I'm pretty bullish that the Blues are in a really strong position. They won nine of their last 10 games, um, including a couple of finals. They were five goals up against Brisbane. It's been a long time, Joey. They tick all the boxes. Can they handle the pressure? He's going to be the, I mm. think, the bit of the talking point. Can they handle now expectation? Mm. They are expected to be a top four team, but I think they are, they're pretty well primed. They yep. defended really strongly all year, even when they weren't playing well offensively. Their defense held up. They're yep. a straight, great contest and clearance team. Yep. Their biggest issue is going to be that ball movement still. So being able to score off turnover, yep. like the modern game, that was still an issue for them. Even when they were winning the back end of the year, it was all from stoppage, yes. not from turnover. Yep. So that's been the big focus over pre-season. Can they repeat that again? Can they Can they get that stop, that volume of stoppage Probably score? still can, but, it's, but history has told us that you need to 
be a very strong turnover team. So a quick little one. 17 of the last 18 premiers, Jay-Z, mm. have been top three in points off turnover differential. Not wow. points from stoppage. Good stat. It's the turnover game. That's the modern game, and it's becoming Which is more, a question mark. Which is still a question mark. You it's a work in, in progress. You know who's important to that? Gov. Jeremy yeah, McGovern. he's an intercept mark and go. Yes. Zach Williams will be important in that, coming back yes. off half back. Yes. Um, I think that they, they've added to their side. Elijah Hollins will play. Mm. Uh, I think Orazio Fantasia has oh. got some footy in him. It's a big um, tick. He's another one as well. And I think that they are traveling pretty nicely. And let's see how far they go. But they, for me, should be a genuine contender. Super strong on the inside. I think there's a question mark on the outside. And Orazio Fantasia with the speed to get out on the bike. I think that's a um, huge pickup. Mackay, I think he's got to be an interesting story throughout the year there's no doubt about that uh, you know late last year I mean we're not the big story Kerno and misfiring in, in forward so I think they need to get Harry Mackay going he is important but Sam Walsh for the next week at least all eyes will be on uh, that story surrounding his back and whether he can get going it's been costly in the past I'm not sure he's at a t- time in his career when he wants to be playing with jabs and whether that's a bit of bone of contention at the moment, I think that's an interesting story to play out down there at Icon Park. It will certainly create a lot of headlines this year. Gold Coast, the new coach, Damien Hardwick, comes with his premiership blueprint and battle plan. Does the club get the new coach pop, Joey? Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to follow trends, yep. it's the Richmond model. What happened to Craig McRae when he went from the Richmond model to Collingwood? Pop, pop. What <laughs> Adam Kingsley went from the Richmond model to the Giants. What happened to the Giants? Pop, yes. So it sets up for Damien Harwick to have the pop, mm. doesn't it? Uh, with, Does. with his game plan, no doubt it is going to look very much like the old Richmond, which is now the new Collingwood and the Giants yes. with a, a few little tweaks. I'm fascinated, though, to see my query about that is – Ooh. Do the Gold Coast Suns have that personnel to play that way? Mm. Are they a team of whippets that can get up and run up and back like the Richmond team that had Butler and Castagna and, and Lambert and Jack Graham and like the Giants and Collingwood? Because when I look at their team, I think they're built from the, the midfield. You know, mm. we talk about Flanders Rao. now with Rao and, and Anderson and Miller, you know, Swallow and Fiorini and, um, you know, McPherson playing a lot of footy now and, and these sorts of guys. Do they have the leg speed and mm. zip? Do they have the speed endurance of the modern style that they want to play? That's what I'm going to look for. Okay. So I'm trying to think, who are their half forwards? Ainsworth's probably the one. Ainsworth. But then I can't think of too many others. You know, Roses or Joel Jeffrey. Yeah. I believe they're trying, you know, Darcy McPherson and Ben Long back as half forwards. Is that a natural role for them? So I want to watch them first. I think you're right. They've got the perfect age bracket now between 23 and 28 year olds that have all played five, five years plus. But they've been inconsistent. Yep. We have not seen the best of, no. I don't think, any of them. No. I think Tuke Miller's the one. You go, yep, he's reached yep. a level. Yep. Um, and there's maybe one or two others. But every one of them have got some upside in them. So they've probably got the biggest scope for me for where they could finish to their ceiling and their um, and their floor. But it's going to be a watch and see. It's interesting you make the point about the half forwards because in that Richmond plan, those high half forwards who pressed up Running and ran the whole ground, that was their whole thing. That was the, That's what the Giants have got. That's yep. what Collingwood have filled their team with. Just when you look at the Gold Coast Suns, I'm not quite sure who are their wingers, who are their speedy high half forwards. So I think it's still a work in you're progress. You're pulling the handbrake. You're pulling the yeah. handbrake on the Suns a little bit. Yep. Um, I like that. Ben King sounds like he's going to stay. Um, in fact, I think there's absolutely no doubt about that. So that is huge news for a uh, footy club, which has lost so many big players in the past. They are eating out of Dimmer's hands, yeah. I've heard, up there. They cannot get enough of the new coach, and he's enjoying things up there. So it finally feels like... Gold Coast are on a path to somewhere. Um, it just we'll find out to see how high they can go, but it's certainly going to be um, a big watch. Um, Raul and Anderson, I think they're going to be um, superstars of the game, and Bailey Humphrey is probably the yeah. other one who I think is really going to emerge because they say like a potential Jordan to goey type. And I've heard Damien Harwick is that excited by what he's seen over preseason. He's yep. very bullish from what he's seen with his group. So I could yep. have egg on my face. I'm not sure. As I said, they're they're more of a watch. This year, for me, yep. they could easily be the spike like the Giants or Collingwood. I've still got some slight question marks. I've got some other teams ahead of them, but they are a fascination. And what we do know, they'll be fun to watch. They certainly they'll be fun will. to watch. Yeah, they'll be hard to beat up there at Metricon, I think, especially if they get going. New style under Dimmer, as Joey says. Hot start from you, Joey. Stick with Footy Talk. We are going to have, going through all the clubs in the AFL with a nice season preview. Like, subscribe. Follow us. Hit Joey up on Instagram. He loves the feedback. And uh, we'll have more clubs coming up next on Footy Talk.